aspect of your financial calculator is the ability to find the fifth variable if you know four. Now we know our variables are n, i, p, v, present value, p, m, t, and f, v, future value. If you know the number of payments, and you know the interest rate, and you know the present value, and you know the payment, you can obviously find the future value. But likewise, if you know the number of payments, the interest rate, the present value, the future value, you can calculate a payment. If you know the uh, number of payments, the interest rate, the um, payment amount, and the future value, you can calculate a present value, and of course, you can keep going and calculate a rate of return if you know the other four variables, and you can even calculate a number of payments if you know your rate of return, your pr uh, present value, payment uh, amount, and your future value. So in every case, you can use the financial calculator to find the missing variable if you have the other four, but you need to have all of the other four or you can't do the calculation. There are two other aspects of this. The first is that the number of payments under N and the interest rate I must be alike in uh, their nature. For example, uh, the number of payments, if it's monthly, would be 12, but it's common to refer to interest rates as annual. But I needs to be the same number of, uh, the interest rate needs to be adjusted so it's per payment. So an interest rate of 12% if annually with a monthly compounding needs to be adjusted by 12% divided by 12 payments equals 1%. So your I would actually be 1% in this case. So it's very important that you remember that your payments and your interest rate must be alike in, the, uh, in terms. The second thing is that present value and future value in your calculator will show a negative sign on one of them. And the negative sign doesn't mean you're losing money as in a negative value, it simply shows the direction of flow, of cash flow. So if you probably notice that I write $100 under present value as negative 100, it's saying that I am giving the bank 100, it's 100 out of my pocket. And then of course in the equation we did previously, we saw over seven years, we end up with about $197, and that shows up as a regular positive number. Now we could do the exact same thing in reverse if we wanted to look at it from the bank's point of view and get the same answer. If you use your financial calculator and input 100, the answer you'll get is a negative 197. That simply means you owe the bank 197 or the bank owes you 197. It doesn't mean that it's actually 197 negative dollars or a loss. It's still 100 up to 197 if you've compounded um, the $100 up there. So there's two aspects of using these variables. One is the number of payments has to match the interest rate. So if it's annual, you can use an annual interest rate. If it's monthly, you need a monthly interest rate. If it's daily, you need to divide the interest rate by 360 so you have a daily interest rate. Also, the present value and the future value, one of them has to be negative. So if you deposit $100 and you uh, enter into the calculator negative 100, then your answer will end up as a positive. If you use $100 in the calculation in the present value, your answer is going to show up as a negative $197. That doesn't mean you lost $197. It just means that the calculator is saying that you either owe $197 or it's an outflow of payment compared to the input in the present value. Um, I know this is a little confusing probably in this explanation, but we're going to go through some examples and I'll be much more clear.